Yeah, I think just before I left Giant, the project that I left on the table that I was fighting with everybody to sign, and they never moved on, and now the world knows I was right, um, was Jennifer Lopez. I was about to sign Jennifer Lopez to her first record deal. And oddly enough, I had hosted a lunch and a dinner for her internally with a lot of the different um, executives, etc. And um, they, most, you know, many of the people just was like, I don't get her. I, she doesn't get it. She doesn't do it for me. Now, mind you, Jennifer was still uh, you know, she was a dancer at the time on um, In Living Color. So, you know, we were, she's not the same Jennifer that we know today. But what I saw in her then that I still see in her now uh, was her uh, diversity, her ability to deliver songs, set trends, to dance, et cetera, et cetera, which is really the other side of the coin. I mean, so I, I think that the Jennifer Lopez thing was one I wish they had finished. Um, I wish they, they had signed her. I think they, they would would, you know, we would have made an exciting project. I think the other thing um, that's interesting that, uh, you know, I didn't understand why the world didn't get is there was a, a black guy named uh, uh, Jeffrey Williams, and we signed his record, but it was a lot of work, and I had to fight a lot, and if you do a little homework and are successful at finding some of his music, you will find out that, like, right now, today, he would be a huge star, because he was, you know, the whole eclectic look, the eclectic sound, the whole thing. You know, he was ahead of his time. That was one of those that I couldn't make everybody get on the same page with, even though I signed it, because they just couldn't, they didn't understand it, you know, and sometimes, you know, we, timing is everything. Yeah. We are in a, a time and an age where timing is definitely everything. I definitely believe that for a fact, because like in the 90s, you had several acts that came out very underrated, very slept on, like I just recently picked up an album by the Barrio Boys, they were a Latin, Latin group signed to SBK Records, and they put out an English language album very R&B and it sounded like a pop R&B album that I think Bashy Boys or NSYNC could have made but it came out around 95, 96 before the boy band Explosion picked up here in the US and same thing goes with um, 3T's debut album. It blew up overseas but it really didn't do much over here in America. They really didn't take off. And I know about that record and you're right. It's one of those records that I thought it would have given the diversity and the, the Latino community and all that. I thought it would have gotten greater reception. Now, now, what was your opinion on uh, Miss Sylvia Rome, who was pretty, who's pretty much like a legend in the music industry? You know, she's a legend, you know, and obviously an inspiration to women. Uh, I remember when I first met her, um, my first uh, meeting with her, Sylvia was already um, a big name in the music business, and I was just getting started as a manager, and I remember meeting her at a convention and going up to her and shaking her hand and telling her I was a big fan and she was my mentor, even though she didn't know it, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, Sylvia is obviously uh, a name that will go down in history as having made a tremendous contribution, not just to the business at large, but, you know, being a, a forerunner to opening the doors and proving to the industry that women had what it takes. Uh, women, too, could lead, you know, these big companies. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with your assessment on that. So what are you up to nowadays, and do you still keep in contact with some of the acts that you um, signed over at Giant? Yeah, I do. I still speak quite frequently to Christopher Williams. I'm still still in touch with Joy and Di and, and Tanya from Jade. I'm still in touch with, you know, quite a few people. Quite a few people. I don't, I'm not going to say I speak with them daily. But yeah, you know, I, we still, I still have a good chunk of those relationships. There's only a few of them that I have not been in touch with or maintained contact with. Mm -hmm. I think maybe about five, six months ago I spoke to Ahmad. I uh, spoke to Hammer maybe three months ago. So I've maintained these relationships. Mm -hmm. So keeping tabs here and there. So tell me about your cosmetics company. Yeah, my new endeavor is uh, Hot Face Cosmetic. And um, it's a cosmetics brand for all women. Um, it's been a, a, a pet project of mine for many years now. Um, I debuted this year, earlier this year, in the spring uh, on May, with Macy's.com. And uh, next month, I commence my, um, later next month, yes, um, we begin to De start debuting inside the stores of Macy's so I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. That's that's definitely big so what's the feedback has been from um, consumers of, of the cosmetics? It's been really good. Um, we're off to a great start. People truly seem to love it. You know we make some unique items uh, particularly this color disc um, which is a all-in-one compact for women to just be able to do their makeup quickly and on the go. That's a really good thing that I'm you know very very proud of. It's travel friendly. It's 
color coordinate it. It takes the guesswork out of doing your makeup or figuring out your colors. And we seem to be getting five-star ratings on this item. And I think that once it, you know, um, had an opportunity to be exposed on a massive level, I think we're going to do exceptionally well with it. Mm, so, ladies, put that on your I need to get list so I can look good for the club, for at home, or Absolutely. what have you. Absolutely. It should definitely be at the top of your I need to get that list. This is this is your LV bag and your your Christian Louboutin shoes and makeup. Louboutin <laughs> sounds very exquisite. Louboutin. That's right. Great to be a part of a new frontier and to be making my move into another area of business. And not only that, just to be doing it with something that has the kind of groundbreaking precedence and building an, a very early reputation that um, is in line with what I've been able to achieve in the music world. I'm pleased, you know. You know, it's been a slow but steady course, and uh, I'm, I'm happy about it. Right, and um, real quickly, um, three bullet points that you'll give to new artists wanting to break in to the business. Um, one, I think you need to, um, you know, you got to perfect your craft now. I mean, you almost got to be, you, you almost have to do artist development yourself. And the way, the best way to do that is to put yourself in as many environments where you can get as really comfortable in front of the mic and as comfortable in front of people as possible. You know, that means, you know, performing. If you're, if you're um, you know, a teenager, I would suggest, or, you know, in your early early 20s, performing in as many, you know, high school environments and clubs as you can get in, et cetera, et cetera, and putting yourself out there like that. Um, that's one. Two, obviously, you know, build a great MySpace page and, um, you know, give yourself as much exposure as you can through the Internet. Um, three, really start to build an infrastructure where you can start just touring locally and build a reputation on a local basis. And then once you get a big reputation in town from playing around clubs and all of that, then I would look to, you know, widen the center of the, the circumference. But what I'm trying to say is build as big a following and build your, get your name out there as much as you can on your own before you even think about trying to hit uh, a record company. I was saying that they will, that record companies will tell you straight if you come up there with no grassroots following or numbers and they'll tell you to turn right back around and, and do what you just mentioned absolutely and I mean and there's so many if you think you're great and you don't know how to make it happen I don't know how to do all this stuff myself I don't know how to plug myself into the local touring circuit and the this and the that if that's how you feel my suggestion is that you um, if that's what you think then I think my, my suggestion would be then apply for all these shows whether it's American Idol and all the music shows that are willing to take brand new unsigned talent and all of that audition there start putting in your applications go to the internet look up these kind of TV shows and put in your applications and do what they tell you to do to get on board there that's a good place to start